Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode 23. This is Bita, and I am with the other Bita. Hi, Bita Jun. Hi, Bita. This is part two of a three-part series that we have for Persian New Year called No Ruz. No Ruz means new day, and we're wishing everyone a great start to the year. And in today's episode, we want to cover what goes on the half scene, and also what are some of the traditional foods that are served at No Ruz and what we like to serve in our homes. The sofre half scene is similar to other sofres that we have throughout the year. We've talked about the Persian wedding sofre, which has different elements that symbolize things for the future. And similar to that, the sofre half scene has certain items on it that we bring in the new year with. Bita Jun, do you want to talk about a little bit about what goes on the sofre half scene? Yeah, Persian New Year. So yeah, it's going to look different this year. It's going to look different than other years for our family. We normally have a big extended family gathering and Mm -hmm. it is quite a party to look forward to. But I love having New Year at this time of year and going to do my best to carry on some of the traditions, the biggest being setting the half scene spread Mm -hmm. with the seven symbolic things on it. And I've always loved setting that up ever since my school teacher days Mm -hmm. and before. I mean, it's something I'm really proud of. I love the meaning behind our holidays and I like sharing that knowledge and I do want to pass it down, you know, to my kids. So I think that it's important to clarify, I guess, for those who don't know that we have a different alphabet. So half seen seen is the letter in Farsi that makes the sound of S. So seven things that start with the S sound are on this spread. So in Farsi, mm-hmm. I'm just going to go through. Please. So Seeb is Farsi for apple. Seeb is on the table and it represents beauty and health. Oh, great. Yep. Sonbol is a beautiful flower. It's actually the hyacinth with this amazing fragrance. It's so beautiful. I love hyacinth. It's something that's also just brought to the house. You know, you always buy it when you see it in this time of year. And it's definitely a great thing to have on the spread. Seer, which is Farsi for garlic. And that also symbolizes health. And somach that we've talked about in other episodes. That's the spice that's like a citrusy. Mm-hmm. Sumac. Sumac, yep. Yeah. You know, there's different interpretations of what that stands for. Let's say I'm just going to call it to have a spicy life. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Serke is vinegar and that's for aging and aging gracefully. Senjed is a tough one to find, but yeah. I can usually count on one of the grandmas picking some up for me or if I don't make it to the Middle Eastern market. Senjed is Farsi for dried wild olives, mm. symbolizing love, some people say. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you could have a um, seed of that. I read somewhere that if you have a Sinjid seed, is like a good luck charm. I used to actually carry one like in my purse <laughs> a long time ago. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I might stick some in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need some good luck. Samanu is interesting. It's like a wheat sprout pudding. We have a cousin in the family that makes it. Oh. But it represents patience and power and bravery. And then Sabze that we talked about in our last episode. If you missed our last episode, we talked a lot about the green sprouts that grow and represent growth and life and newness. Uh Uh-huh. Don't forget sikke too. Yes. Which is like coins. Yes. To represent wealth and prosperity, I guess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a bunch of other ones that are always there, but they don't start with the S. 
to that point. Yes, traditionally, it's a half scene. It has seven things that start with us. But, you know, in real life, like sometimes we can't get that and you list it off more than seven. So really, you can customize it to like whatever ones work for you. And it's just the representation of having these elements there when you bring in the new year. And this is usually set on a like little place setting on a table or with usually with some sort of beautiful fabric underneath it, maybe and a mirror and usually candles. And what else is on the sofa? Goldfish or some little fish swimming around in a fishbowl. So for some families, that's the first and only time that they have a pet. (laughs) You know, the fish are really important and they're there to represent movement and life and eggs. Sometimes, you know, the Persian New Year falls at different times, close to the new year, the turning to spring. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's close to Easter. And so anyways, we have colored eggs. We paint eggs and we... We'll have a bowl of eggs on the half scene, and those represent fertility, just as we do in our wedding ceremony. Mm -hmm. The mirror that you mentioned that's kind of in the back of the spread of things is there Mm -hmm. for reflection and light and wisdom, and then the candles for enlightenment. And sometimes there's a bowl of rose water or orange blossom water just to kind of bring fragrance and sweetness to your life, and then a book of poetry Mm -hmm. or the holy book is often there as well. Yeah. And usually within whatever book that you have there is something special. That's usually where all the cash is. Right. Yes. Probably my personal favorite thing that's on the half scene is Shirni. Little cookies. Little cookies and sweets. So Mm -hmm. I think like technically they're supposed to be there as like part of the decoration of it. But it's really hard not to be snacking on them and eating them. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Persian cookies are really small. They're tiny little like, oh gosh, they're like smaller than your thumb. Mm -hmm. So they're easy to pop into your mouth. Exactly. And they're so delicious. And so traditionally, what the rituals are is that the younger generations go and pay respect to the older generation. So you go to people's homes, and you go a didani. So you go see them for New Year, and you go and you have those sweets and teas and you go and visit. I remember being little, and we would go to like, you know, different relatives homes. And when we would go there, we would have these sweets and we would have tea. And then as a little kid, what we would do is we'd have like an envelope and we'd see like how much AD we could get. And what AD is basically when you go to older relatives house, what they would give the younger kids in return is they'd actually give them AD and AD is money. So like similar to like, you know, in like Chinese New Year, they give like red envelopes, you know, whatever holy book or whatever respected book that you're using on your half scene, there would be money in there and then they would open it up and you would take, you know, a $1 bill, a $5 bill, a 20 or sometimes if you were really lucky, there was like a $100 bill waiting for you in there. So you would take that. And I remember being a little kid and be like, how much money did you get? So those are always really fun memories to look back on. And hopefully we can do those again in the futures. Yeah, in the tradition of AD, it's crisp, brand new bills. That's right. And our family has tradition that certain grandpas and uncles and stuff give out $2 bills just so that's sort of special and you don't spend it. And yeah. so, well, one really cute thing that I like to do, and it's kind of a modern version, uh-huh. either use like a little laundry pin, you know, how you can make crafty butterflies. Oh, fun. With a laundry pin and then put the bill and fan it out and make a little butterfly. Those are really cute to pass out money that way. Yeah. It could also be gifts. It doesn't always have to be cash, but it's just a special way to celebrate the holidays and and give gifts. Do you do gifts? Our family doesn't do gifts, just the cash. We're pretty much more of like a cash AD, but there's definitely gifts involved as well, too. So it's just a really great time to celebrate and celebrate the new year. And the new year, as we have mentioned before, is actually celebrating for not just the moment of New Year's, but for 13 days after that, too. And within that 13 days is when you're supposed to call or visit the older people and your friends and family within those 13 days. So that's 13 days of celebration and eating. Let's talk about some of the foods. Let's talk about what we like to serve, what we like to eat, what's traditional. Well, so this year I'll be cooking myself, so it's going to be different. But normally I just show up with some shirni that I've baked myself or maybe one of my bita salads. I don't usually have to do the full thing. Uh-huh. So I count on the extended family and the grandmas. But we definitely have the herb rice and the fish and the ash and kind of all the traditional things. How about your family? 
I think sabzi puna mahi, the herb rice with fish, is a very traditional dish. And I have also heard that different regions kind of celebrate it a little bit different. But one way that a lot of Persians bring in the new year is with sabzi puna mahi. And sabzi puna is a herb rice. It's really beautiful with fresh greens of dill and parsley. But you can use dried herbs too if you wanted to make it. And then you steam that and serve it with fish, usually traditionally like a white fish. We've had different versions too. You know, sometimes it's just a smoked fish. Uh Uh-huh, that's right. Other times it's a like a saffron fish. And quite honestly, if I were to do it without a lot of thought and preparation, I would probably get Trader Joe's baked cod (laughs) or their (laughs) tilapia (laughs) is really good. Like, I don't think that you have to sweat it in modern days. If you just kind of pick your favorite fish, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, greens and herbs plays a really big role in the food. So like that herb rice, also fresh herbs in kuku sabzi is often on the table. Kuku sabzi is a herb and spinach frittata. That's super delicious, super healthy. The other thing that I love making for New Year's is ashirishte. That's our hearty herb, bean, and noodle soup. And that has long noodles in it. And that represents rishte zindigi, like having healthy and long and prosperous life. So that is one of my favorite things to make. Depending on the year, I can do my traditional long version of that by soaking the beans and all of that in advance. But honestly, these days when I make ashirishte, I'm using prepared beans and using frozen spinach, you know, chopping up herbs and things like that. But I don't make it so cumbersome that it's hard for me to pull off. So it doesn't lack flavor. The shortcuts that I use, I feel like still keeps the integrity of the dish. And I love sharing that with my friends. You know, times are different, man. Like a year ago, Uh it was kind of the beginning of all of this with the pandemic. It was a week into pandemic time. Uh huh. Yeah. And we were sort of back and forth whether we were going to get to do our big celebration. And in the end, it was Mm -hmm. canceled. So it was just sort of our nuclear family plus my mom, who's in our pod, in our circle. Mm -hmm. It was my husband's birthday and I had my dress on and we did it in my house and I had my half scene and Uh and we never thought that we would be here for a year. Mm -hmm. So I'll just say like, you know, these are all the things that are traditional and that we'd love to have and see, but you just pick one or two. I'm going to pick one or two, you know, of all those things and make the best of it and be grateful for what we have. Absolutely. And right now, like I find any reason to celebrate. <laughs> we need to like celebrate little things, big things. Sure. New Year's, let's do it. You know, leading up to Persian New Year is Charshan Basuri that we talked about in our last episode, the festival of light and fire, where there's an opportunity to celebrate and to have new experiences for people who haven't done that. It's actually jumping over a little bonfire and just making good wishes. Yes, traditionally, these events happen outdoors with a lot of people. You know, that Siza Bidar festival on the 13th day is typically out in big parks with a lot of people around. But, you know, we're adapting to our current lifestyles and the current situations that we're all facing. So, yeah, whatever you need to do, just paying homage to these little events is what really gets me through. So hopefully people listening can use this as inspiration and maybe try a new dish to make for Persian New Year or try to set out a little half scene and put the things that you have accessible. A lot of the things you can use from your own house. So, you know, you have an apple, you have somar, that sumac that you have like maybe in your pantry. Serke is vinegar. Most people have vinegar in their pantry. Seke, little coins. They don't need to be gold coins. They don't need to be any special coins. What I like to do is I'll get like 10 or 15 pennies and wash them and make them like all sparkly. And, <laughs> and traditionally what we do for the half scene is sometimes you can have like matching little bowls and you put each of the elements in a little bowl. If you don't have goldfish, someone that we follow on Instagram, on social media, Vartamelon has been making these little goldfish candies, essentially. So, you know, you can have something like that, a little special, something a little bit different, whatever works for you, whatever works for your family, and hopefully bringing in a great year, hopefully for everybody. Yeah, I hope we've helped you remember, you know, the special times of the past fondly and Also, it's a time of hope and renewal. And so let's just all hope that maybe this time next year, we can start to do some of the bigger, grander gatherings and celebrations. Yeah. The Ask the Beats question today is, let me ask you, Beat to June. Sure. 
comes from our ongoing database of questions we've collected over time in our surveys is, can you please tell us how to order in a restaurant? Now, you may be able to go to a restaurant and sit outside where you are. Maybe you're ordering takeout, but what are some things that you would advise someone that's new to ordering Persian food from a restaurant? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as a Persian, when I go to a Persian restaurant or when I order from a Persian restaurant, I really enjoy ordering different kinds of kebabs because I guess we'll make stews more often at home. But kebabs are kind of like the restaurants really specialize in making kebabs. So there's like kubida kebabs, if there's going to be ground beef or lamb kebabs that they have, and they cook it on flat skewers over like a open flame. Essentially, they get like a beautiful char on it. There's like fillets, kebab a bag, juja kebab, which is like marinated chicken in saffron and lemon juice that is like really super delicious, especially with the char on it or like salmon kebab. Kebabs. I'm a big kebab person when I order from a restaurant. So that's one of the things I like to order. The other thing that I think is really great to order at a Persian restaurant is the appetizers because there's a bunch of different variety. The salad shirazi, which is like a crunchy tomato, cucumber, onion salad with a lemony vinaigrette to it, or like the kashkabadam jun, which is like an eggplant dish that is super delicious just to like dip into or have it on the side of your plate. Those are some of my like my favorite things. Even for Persian New Year, as a great way to do it is to actually order out and support your local Persian restaurant, too. Absolutely. What else do you like to eat at a Persian restaurant? I mean, I'm with you with all of that. I would definitely agree on all the appetizers. We really like Basta Musir, is the mm -hmm. like elephant, garlic, shallot, thick yogurt as mm -hmm. an appetizer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes certain places will bring Khoresh on Tadig as an appetizer. Oh, yeah, so good. There's a couple of ways you can order. You can order family style and just have like a variety of kebabs on a huge platter for everyone to take from. And then each person has a mound of rice, mm -hmm. and maybe some roast tomatoes and some roast onions. And I like to have the appetizers as a side, like all throughout to mix with it as well. Mm -hmm. Or you can each order individually. And then that would be like your kebab next to your rice. And often there's a salad or you can say half salad, half rice. And then one more thing I would add is if you are at the restaurant, if you have the opportunity to go, I would say order the Persian tea. It's something special. Mm -hmm. It's aromatic. It often has like cardamom flavors, notes, and it's really nice with some of the desserts. You could order some of the traditional desserts. It's a little harder to get, I guess, take out to get the tea, but the tea is lovely. Yeah. And talking about drinks, don't you guys always like to order dur too? Yes, if you're in the restaurant, we get a pitcher of doof. We really like having the yogurt drink doof with mm -hmm. the kebabs. Yeah, and that's a carbonated fizzy yogurt drink, huh? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this has been really fun, and we will conclude our big New Year's series next time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pizza June. Bye bye. Bye. So you've been listening to Modern Persian Food with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling your friends or giving us a good rating on iTunes. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com for recipes and info that we talked about today. Thanks so much. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time. Mm -hmm.